there is a reason that people go to school to learn mathematics. There's a reason people go to school to learn most things. It's because learning most things is tough. But let's, let's focus on math because I think math is especially difficult and especially challenging to self-study. I mean, just think about all the people that go to college to learn math and they don't make it. And they have a professor, they have classmates, they have resources at the school, they have a book. I mean, they're all in, they've paid for the course and sometimes they don't make it. So self-study is harder than that because you don't have a teacher, you don't have those classmates, you don't have that structure. You have to do it all on your own. You might say, well, what's the point of self-study? If it's harder than going to college, I should just go to college. That's a valid argument. You could do that. But there is something that you gain from self-study that you can't get from taking a course in college. And I just got goosebumps for some reason. But it's true, okay? I am, if anything, I'm a professional math class taker. I have taken so many math classes in my life. It's ridiculous. In fact, it's, it's almost embarrassing. I feel like I should know more math. If, if you knew how many math classes I've taken, you, you would think it, it's pretty ridiculous. And the thing is, you can take all these math classes and in each class you take, you maybe learn 70 to 80% of the material, maybe 90% of the material you absorb it and you can get a good grade and you come out a lot stronger. It is a wonderful experience. But when you pick up a book and, and you start reading that book and you read the words that are coming off those pages, it stays in your mind. Well, like it stays with you almost like forever sometimes. I remember things I've read in topology books. I'm, I'm thinking now of, uh, of an example of an integral that had a typo in a book on topology by Franz. I believe it was Franz. So random stuff that you remember that just kind of gets like embedded into your brain. Now, I'm not an expert on how the brain works, but I do know that whenever I read a math book, it's very, very different than watching a video. It's very different. It's not the same. And so I think that there's something that you can gain from reading math books. So how do you, how do you read math books? How do you get started? What can you do if you want to become better at self-study? Despite the fact that we've established that it's much, much harder to learn on your own than to go to college. Well, I think the first thing you should do is get some books. You, you do need some books. Which books? Well, there's plenty of math books. I have tons of videos on math books. Um, they're all pretty good. At the end of the day, I mean, some books are a lot better than others and they will make your experience much better. But even bad math books, I think, have some merit. I, I, I've, I've had, I have some older books that are just, some of them are really hard to read. And I, I think about that sometimes. People, people often say that, you know, math has gotten a lot easier over the years, but I, I don't think that's true. Math is still math. It's just that a lot of the math courses have gotten easier. But the upper level courses, like the harder courses, they're still pretty hard. You know, graduate courses are still graduate courses. Upper division mathematics courses are still upper division mathematics courses. I think where there's been some loss of rigor, perhaps, has been in the um, calculus courses, like calculus one, calculus two, and calculus three. And that's happened because there's been a shift. A, a lot of the newer books on calculus are written with a certain audience in mind, and that audience is engineers or, or computer science students or students who are not going into math. Whereas a lot of the older books were strictly math books written for math students, right? So it didn't matter what you were gonna study. If you wanted to be an engineer, you had to take Professor XYZ and use that really old school book from the 60s that has proofs and rigorous examples and you have to suck it up and be a math major for one semester or two or three if you have to take the full sequence. But that's changed, that's changed. Uh, it's, it's now a little bit more approachable, I think, which, which is a good thing, right? There's plenty of people who take calculus in college and that's, that's as far as they're going. 
So I digress. The first thing you need is a book. All right, get a good book. And again, I've got videos on books. It doesn't really matter so much what book. You need to get a book that you're excited about. That's the most important thing. Like, here's a book right here. If you're excited about this book, okay, this is a very advanced book. You're not going to be excited about this book. Algebraic number three by Weiss. Okay, so I'm just going to give it a whiff here. Oh, this is an ex-library book. Oh, wow. Wow, no one checked it out. Well, if you're excited about a book, then you're going to want to read the book. And that is the most important thing when it comes to self-study. It's having that motivation and that desire because sometimes when you wake up in the morning, you're not going to want to do self-study, right? You're not going to want to do it. So having that motivation, the desire, the discipline, creating that is what really helps. So, so once you have a book, what you need to do or what you could do, this is just my advice, is try to create a simple routine. Now, I personally have problems with complex routines. I, I can make a to-do list and I love making it, but it's, it's just too structured. I, I kind of feel like I need a little bit more liberty than that. I want to be able to study what I want to study or do what I want to do at any given point of the day. But barring responsibilities and work like that, uh, you know, work and jobs and stuff like that, barring that, um, I prefer to have a more flexible schedule. But, but I do keep a simple routine, right? An exercise routine, a mathematics routine. So I think it's important to have a self-study routine. So when you're creating your self-study routine, what you could do is um, you could talk to AI about it. That's a really good thing to do. I use AI all the time. Um, and you can ask it, you know, here's my schedule. What do you think a good time to study is? And it can give you some advice. I would suggest trying to study first thing in the morning if you can. Some people get up really early and they go to the gym. Some people get up early and study. Try to get up early and do both. See if you can get up early, you know, have your coffee, whatever, get some exercise, and then and do a little bit of mathematics or whatever else you're trying to learn. It doesn't have to be math, but this is a math channel. We're talking about math, so mathematics it is. And if you get into the habit of doing that every day, sure, on some days you'll wake up and you'll be like, oh, I don't really want to do anything, you know, and you just force yourself to do it. Sit down, do a couple problems, and you've, you've conquered the day, right? You wake up at five, you go for a run or a walk, or you go to the gym, or you work out, you do some push-ups and some sit-ups and go for a walk, whatever it is, right? Put the shoes on and go for a run. Come back, freshen up, have some food, sit down, do some mathematics before you start your day. So even before you go to school, before you go to work, you've conquered your day, you've done math, you've exercised. It's just such a great way to, to live your life. So, and that's gonna help. So you've got the book that you're passionate about. You've got the routine. So now it's just up to you to keep it. And this is where, this is where it gets hard. This is where I feel like people who are successful become separated from people who are not successful. And you see this in math books, you know, like this math book here hasn't been used much. I haven't, I certainly have not used this book much. Um, I've glanced at it once or twice. I don't even know where I got it. It's a very advanced book, algebraic number theory. I know a little bit of algebraic number theory, but I'm certainly uh, not an expert. This is a very high level math topic. Uh, it's a cool topic though. I know what this is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know a lot of this math, but I am, I am not an expert. In any case, when people start a course in algebraic number theory, or let's pick an easier subject, um, algebra and trigonometry, they usually start very motivated. And you can see that in a couple different ways. The grades, um, the attitude of the class. Um, you know, when I teach a class, usually the first day of class is really fun because, you know, you read the syllabus and everyone's nervous. And, you know, I try to put the class at ease and it's always really fun. And you get a lot of really motivated students, especially in the honors classes. You get people that are just ready to go. But then after like a month, that enthusiasm starts to wane and the highlighting in the textbooks starts to wane. If you look at math books, most of the highlighting and the notes are in the initial parts of the book. When you go back farther into the book, People, people stop writing notes down. It's like, it's like they've given up. And it's not that they've given up. It's just that they've lost motivation, right? They've lost motivation. You lose your motivation. As human beings, you know, we're, we're only capable of, of handling so much, you know. And after, you know, doing math every day for a couple of weeks, you start to get tired of it sometimes. And again, sometimes you might not want to do it. And so you, you tend to burn out. You tend to burn out. So 
Yeah, how do you fight that? You just have to have willpower. You can take a day off and just make sure to come back to it, but try to keep your, your eyes on the prize, you know? Why are you self-studying? You, you have to have a reason, right? Why do you want to learn mathematics, you know? Um, if, if there's something you want to learn, you need to have a really good reason for learning it. And that's what's gonna keep you going after that burnout phase that you experience after that initial enthusiasm. So get a book, create a routine. Again, I think the morning is the best time to study. I absolutely best time to act, best time for everything before you go to work, before you go to school, before you start your day, do your thing, get your stuff done, conquer the day. And um, yeah, I think it's gonna help you with your self-study journey. When I was in college, I had this, uh, I had this teacher, it was a psychology class, a really cool teacher. He used to uh, have us watch Seinfeld episodes because he told us that the writers of Seinfeld, which was Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David, um, big fan of both of these guys, geniuses. And he was saying that they had psychologists help write the show. So I don't know if they hired psychologists or you know, to try to make it funny, you know, to try to make it appeal to people. It was a very popular show. And in that class, the teacher also taught us something else. He taught us that self-help books weren't always a thing. And the self-help era, I forget when it came about, maybe it was in the 70s or 80s, but all of a sudden there was all these books on self-help, you know, how you can learn to do X, Y, Z, how you can do X, Y, Z, kind of like this video, how you can learn math on your own, how you can self-study on your own, same thing. And, and before that era, apparently, these types of books weren't as common. I mean, they, they were probably still out there, but... There wasn't such an influx of these self-help books. He called it the, the self-help phenomena. And he said that it's, it's really hard to do stuff on your own. These books, you buy these books, you know, how to become a millionaire in real estate, how to trade stocks, you know, how to learn math in three weeks. You know, you, you buy these books or you watch these videos and, and you think, oh, it's easy, it's easy, but it's not. Okay, it's not. The truth is it's not, right? It's, it's super hard. So if you're watching this video and... You're motivated, keep your motivation, but realize that it's hard. And, and I think I've described why it's hard. You know, you, can, you have that initial phase of enthusiasm and then it starts to wane and it just starts to go down. And then you get to that point where you just don't have any more motivation to keep going, right? And that's where you gotta take a break or reevaluate. Think about what you're doing, why are you studying? So yeah, and it was kind of a random video. I just thought I would make this video I apologize about the sound. Uh, my microphone is not working. I need a new one or I need to fix it. So hopefully you can hear me okay. If you want to learn mathematics, I do have courses. They're on my website. Uh, well, actually, they're on Udemy. But please use the links from my website, mathsorcerer.com or freemathfits.com. I've got courses on algebra, uh, advanced calculus, calculus, differential equations, abstract algebra, etc. And if you're not a subscriber and you felt like you got any value from this content, feel free to hit subscribe. And yeah, I think that's it. Keep doing mathematics.